I thought of the title Working Through as having at least two meanings. One is that idea of when you're working through a problem, it's like this idea of just got to work through it, figure out all the angles, just got to move through. There's nothing else you can do to get through. And then the other idea was just because some of this work was made during COVID, which I know for many people was a super creative time. I wasn't one of those people. I feel like I did make some things and uh, finally got with it, but it was about working through the time of COVID as well. Well, I love to see how pattern develops on its own. Like I might have a loose idea of what I want something to be doing, but the multitude of connections and pieces that go in start to assert their own demands into the piece of and, and put some information that maybe I would never even have come up with. And that is one of the things I most love about making art is when the materials assert themselves and add into the meaning or the pattern, something that I couldn't have even designed because I didn't know things would work like that. So I love that bit. And some of this work, the idea of repetition, like it's me repeating myself in some ways. I do feel like there are a lot of ideas I work through over and over and over, simply because I don't think you can ever like completely get to the bottom of an idea in just one piece. And also there's a part of my work working with these disparate materials. There's a problem solving that has to happen every time. Like how do you connect? a piece of wax with a hog ring and how do you make a piece of rubber hang on a scrubby pad. So sometimes when I have got that all figured out once and I've spent a whole lot of time figuring that, I think, well, I've got some more of these materials. I'm just going to make another one, see what else happens with a few changes, but let that problem solving avail itself one more time. I actually have a degree in English and linguistics. That's such an academic career and I never fully did that. So when I started going to art school and making art, I kind of fell into the same things I had always been doing in my life as a creative person. I sewed, I did crafty kind of things, and I've always been drawn to the physical world as well. I like to work with my hands. So I did have all these crazy materials around, so I would say, yeah, from day one, I've been working with disparate and found materials. So growing up in Oklahoma on a farm with my dad, who was one of these people who we would always stop by the side of the road and pick through trash bins, or on the farm, like you just made things do. You made do with what you had around there. So that kind of working aesthetic has always been a part of my method too. It's like, okay, here's this laying here. What should I do with it? What happened for me when I had the residency at Glean, it actually gave me the opportunity to go back and work with a lot of disparate materials. Because after I got out of art school and, you know, I kind of found my voice, found my methods, I was working almost exclusively with waxed cloth. It was scraps of waxed cloth that were found actually from offcuts of sewing factories, but it was the same material over and over, and I was doing lots of different things with it. And then I got the Glean residency, and it was almost like being back in art school again. It's like, here's your assignment. You have to make 10 items. They have to be 90% out of stuff you found at the dump. So it was like, whoa, how fun. But because I already, I think, had a visual language established in my practice, I already knew materials I liked to work with, I didn't go and just jump off into this whole other world. I feel like it was just kind of a new fresh start with some added materials. And I have loved that. It's been, I think now, six years, maybe. I think I did that in 2015, um, since I had the Glean residency and I still am working with some of the materials I found during that time. Yeah, I think that I have been termed an installation artist, but I also feel like I've done 
less installations than I've done more wall sculptures or wall-based pieces. And I do think of myself as an assemblage artist, or what's the other word? Uh, bricolage. 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 Because you're working not with just papers you assemble, which I think oftentimes assemblage is thought of as sort of flat, and bricolage is maybe just more bits of things. But that method of assembling is really key to my practice, and sometimes actually I cut things apart so I can reassemble them. Like I have made prints that could be not thought of as actually fine prints and could stand on their own, but I've cut them apart and then reformed them back together either by sewing or this thing I do, which is connecting with nuts and bolts or hog rings, which I still consider a form of sewing. Um, and then they take on this richness and depth that I feel goes beyond the, the print I made. I'm very into this idea of things that reform and form a different thing. So they may not look like they're original. They might be better, they might be worse, they might just be cobbled together, but still they function, they're there. And I love seeing those physical repairs and then just the metaphorical idea of what stands behind something repaired. You know, this idea that it, it's with somebody's trash, but it's worth something to someone else. So that is a piece that's comprised of a scrubby pad that goes on an industrial floor scrubber and then some kind of metal plumbing thing. Again, I don't know if I found that at the dump or the rebuilding center or somewhere. And a whole, I found a whole roll of rubber cord. And so that's what the three materials are in that and then paint, I think it's spray paint. What I hope is that case in many of my pieces of art, I see different things. I can look at it and just think of Eva Hess and these wild strings. Sometimes I think about, it's just like a ponytail, you know, and then there's that part sometimes, and I know, and I don't ever like it when students answer me this, if I'm talking to people about what their work means, like, I don't know, it just happened. And sometimes I actually have to say, yeah, there is a part that I don't know. It just really came together and aesthetically it pleased me. Like, you know, the round juxtaposed with the long hanging thing that feels lively and, and the multitude of the strings. Like, so for me, it seems to go along with the rest of my work. There's this idea of multitudes, things that seem a little bit out of control an industrial gizmo in there. There's, I think there's a nut and bolt on the top of that. And a little bit of a mystery, like how is it held together and what's it doing? So this is a piece again that or originated during the Glean residency at the dump, the Metro Waste Transfer Station. So I found a whole pile of drive belts that you know, the kind that run engines. And some of them weren't even used. They were still in their little plastic sleeve that hung them on the hardware store wall. But anyway, so it's drive belts. And what I did was cut them up on my bandsaw and uh, mount them to a uh, panel and then painted them. And again, I didn't set out with a, per well, I do set out sometimes with a particular idea of what I wanted to look like. But of course that never works and things start to assert themselves and it ends up better than what I thought it was gonna be. But that piece I love talking about because I think that's a great piece just by itself. It's a very, I think, a real strong piece. And again, you don't know what it is. It looked like it could be carved wood, but not quite, it's hard to know. But I used that piece, or one just like it, because I made several of those. I used one of them as a mold for pulped paper when I had a paper making residency at Pulp and Deckel. So I used it as a mold and pressed pulp into it and made these handmade paper that had that pattern. And then a couple of years later, when I had the residency at Bullseye, I used the same thing and created a plaster mold that I poured glass into and made a glass one of them. So I love this idea of taking something that's so far from its original function, which was running a motor, to a piece of art that then became a mold for other things, which brought into the conversation this idea of high art materials and low art materials. 
So do you think the glass piece is worth more? Is it more fine art piece than this piece here that's actually the, I'm not, this is just a rhetorical question, but how we think about art and art making and art materials these days.